All right, welcome back to MP2. What we're gonna do to finish this lesson is we're gonna talk about how to launch a new activity in Android. So just to give you some sense of where we are and kind of where we're going. So we're working on adding a feature to our app that allows the user to add a new favorite place to the map. And we're working incrementally. So at this point, assuming that you've been following along and your previous test cases are working, your server knows how to accept requests um, to add a place to the map. Um, your client knows how to generate those requests. Um, and now what we're doing, so we've, we've sort of handled some of the, the plumbing, if you will, uh, about how to move data from place to place and the server is doing the right thing. Um, now what we need to do is we actually need to work on the user facing components. So in the last walkthrough, what we did is we talked about how to, how to add the ability to handle uh, clicks on the map. And where we're going with this is that when the user long presses on the map at a particular location, what we want to do is start up a dialogue allowing them to add details about their favorite place. Now, if you remember when we started stubbing out um, MP2, we already added this empty add place activity to our project. Um, and this was in order to get the test suites to compile. So we had this activity. And all we're gonna talk about now is how do we launch it? Sort of how do we move from one activity to another in Android? So far, all the work that we've been doing has been on our, um, essentially on the activity, uh, on the main activity. And we've been talking about, you know, how to have it render a list of places and update the markers and stuff like that. And that's all been great. But what we wanna do is figure out how do we get, um, how do we get the, um, how do we transition to this other activity that we're gonna work on in the next part of the uh, of MP2, right? So we'll work on the layout and the functionality of this new activity next time. What we wanna do right now is just figure out how to get it started. And then your challenge is gonna be how to make sure it has access to the data that it needs from the main activity. Because the main activity knows something that the add place activity is gonna to need to know when it starts. Okay, but let's just talk about first, how do we start activities in Android? And this is something that you could certainly find out through their tutorials. Um, but the idea is in Android, to start a new activity or to move to a different activity or different screen, what we do is we create an intent. And the intent describes the activity that we want to move to. And then we tell Android, okay, I want to launch this new activity. Um, now, you know, normally this is done in, some, uh, in, in response to the user sort of doing something, right? So you imagine the app starts up and the user is at the main screen. And then there's some action they take that causes the app to transition into this other activity. Now, uh, just for fun, I'm going to put that in our single tap confirmed helper. So last time we added some new events to the map um, that allow us to handle single uh, clicks and long clicks. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to use those um, to, to finish the job here, right? So we're going to use these to, uh, to wrap up, uh, or not to finish the job. We're going to use these to launch this new activity. Sorry, my brain is, it's early in the morning. My brain is still turning on. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and, and just uh, start a new activity when the user clicks the map. So what we're going to do is we're going to say um, start add place activity uh, equals intent. And to, to create an intent, we pass two things. So I need to import this. Uh, it's part of android.content. And then we need to tell uh, Android what class contains the activity that we want to start. And so this play, in this case, the class is called add place activity. And we use this syntax on, this is a little strange, um, but the idea is this creates a reference to the class, right? So it's not an instance of the class. We're not calling the constructor. This is just a way of creating a reference to the class that essentially kind of uniquely identifies that class. So when we pass this intent to Android and say, I wanna start a new activity, Android knows what class contains the activity that we want to start. And then Android is actually going to create a new instance of that class and call the onCreate method and sort of go through the lifecycle process that we've discussed a little bit before when we talked about our main activity. Um, and we'll get more practice at that coming up because we're actually going to have to flesh out this add place activity and add content and, and event handlers and other things to it to get it to work is the last part of MP2. Okay, um, so I've got this start, start add place activity intent. Uh, that's all set up. And then all I do is I call start activity and you'll see start activity. This is a method that I've inherited from app compat activity because I've extended it. Um, and I'm going to pass the start add place activity to it. And this should do it. Um, this should, this should work. So start activity does what you think it does. It says basically starts this activity, uh, the activity uh, defined by the intent that I created right here. 
All right, so let's go ahead and, and run our app and see what happens. Um, whenever we do this, whenever we start experimenting with the app of the emulator, it's always a good idea to uh, come up with a hypothesis about what we expect to happen, right? So what should happen here, right? What am I expecting to happen? Um, what I'm expecting to happen is, and you don't always know what you're expecting to happen, but you can sort of come up with a guess. So I'm gonna click on the map and, I got this piece of fuzz in my mouth, sorry, hat. Um, I'm gonna click on the map and I'm expecting a new activity to start. Now this activity is empty. So I don't know, maybe it'll be a blank screen. Maybe the app will crash because maybe I have to put some content in there. I'm not sure if you're new to Android, you might not know exactly what's about to happen, uh, but let's go ahead and click on the map and see. All right, so I click on the map, uh-oh, boom. So the app crashed. Why did the app crash? Uh, to find that, I'm gonna open up my logs. And here is a log message that seems to be generated right uh, a few seconds ago. And what does this say? It says, uh, it says, so it says, this is my app. It says, unable to find explicit activity class. Have you declared this activity in your Android manifest.xml? Now, in your life as a software creator, you are going to deal with, I don't know, I, I've lost count. I'm probably up to millions and millions of error messages that I've had to figure out and fix in my time creating software. Some of those error messages are gonna be really hard to fix, right? Bewildering and you'll have to dig into it for hours and hours, sometimes days to figure out what's going on. Some of them are easier than others. And in particular, sometimes some kind person somewhere, someone at Google wrote this error message and they were so thoughtful about, you know, the poor new Android developers that are a little confused and may have missed a few steps and didn't go through the tutorials as carefully as they, they might have, that they've actually tried to help us here by writing a useful, informative error message that is leading us in the direction of a potential solution. So let's look at this. It says, have you declared this activity in your Android manifest.xml? Okay, interesting. This is not a file that we paid a lot of attention to. This is gonna be our first time. So I'm gonna go over here in my apps main directory, there is indeed a file called Android manifest.xml. So let's open that up. Now, I'm not gonna go through this all together, but let me talk a little bit about a high, at a high level about what this file is for. This file defines certain high level metadata and features of your application. Um, and its job is essentially to sort of describe certain things about your application to the Android system. Um, and Android uses this you know, as your application is launched and as it's running to find out certain things about your app. So for example, this is also XML. It's a similar format that we used, uh, what we saw used to define the, the uh, layout of our, of our app. And something that we'll have a little bit more fun with as we work on the activity for MP2 to, to wrap that up. Um, so let's look at this. So for example, uh, one of the things that this file does is it, de it, it declares the permissions that our app needs. So currently our app only uses access to the internet that's required in order to fetch that list of favorite places and also make these post requests. So using any sort of HTTP or any sort of networking um, connection in Android requires that you tell the Android system that you're gonna use the internet. The reason for this permission model is so that Android can maintain control over what apps are allowed to do so that they can't you know, steal your data and invade your privacy any more than they, they already do, right? So every app on Android has to tell the Android system in the manifest these are the permissions that I'm going to use. And in some cases for these sensitive permissions, I actually even have to ask the user. I both have to tell Android because then when you go to the app store, it says it's going to try to do this, then I actually need a dialogue for that as well. Okay, so, and then, and then here's this application block and this has things like, you know, um, the, the name, this is not really a name, it's the name of the package, uh, the label. So this is what may, it might be used like uh, in, the, um, in the menus, right? You might wonder like, where does the name on the menu come from? Well, it's, it's in here, it's in the manifest. I'm not gonna go through every one of these, um, but down here at the bottom, this is where we tell Android what activities are part of our app. And the reason it crashed was that we tried to launch an activity that we hadn't declared in the manifest. So the solution is pretty simple, declare the activity in the manifest. Then when we launch it, Android will be able to find it here and it will know that this is an activity that's okay for this app to use. Uh, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'll open up a new activity block. I want my add place activity, and that's pretty much all I need to do. You'll see this is a closing tag for, for XML. 
Uh, all I'm doing here is I'm saying, okay, Android, it's okay to launch an activity uh, that starts with the name of the package that's shared by the rest of the class and ends with that activities dot add place activity. That's an okay activity to launch. Oh, the other thing I want to point out here, it's kind of interesting and, and useful. You might wonder now that my app has two activities, when I click on it, like in the launcher or in a men in a, in the menu, when I'm browsing apps, how does Android know where to start this uh, piece of uh, XML right here tells Android that this activity, which is the main activity, is the one that should be used by the launcher. So when the launcher launches this app, like when the user has turned it off and is coming back to it, we always start at the main activity. That's how it's configured. This is how Android knows this. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's run the app again. I'll uh, close my logs and let's try this again. So now again, I'm going to uh, wait for the app to load. I'm going to click and now I see blank. And what's happening is I'm successfully transitioning to this new activity. Now the activity is empty. Um, and so an act empty activity in Android corresponds to a blank screen. And that is uh, where we'll pick up next time we continue work on this is actually getting this uh, activity uh, laid out properly, giving it to, to use the layout um, and getting it to work correctly. And that's the work that it remains uh, to, fat, to, to pass the last MP2 test case. Now, uh, you might wonder, oh gosh, uh, now I'm stuck. There's a back button up here that I can use to go back to the main activity. And you can see that I can now sort of toggle back and forth between these. Okay, so I'm close to being done here, but you do need to go back to the activity, uh, to, sorry, to the MP lesson page and look a little bit at the description of what needs to happen here. Because here's our current problem. Uh, so the main activity, it knows where the user clicked, but the add place activity, doesn't yet. And so there's this piece of information that the main activity needs to communicate to the add place activity. When the add place activity starts up, it needs to be able to find out the latitude and the longitude that the user clicked at and that was responsible for starting. it. So we need to pass this. It's almost like passing arguments to a method, but it's a little different. We need to pass these, these two pieces of information to the add place activity. The add place activity is going to allow the user to put in a description. We're going to pull the ID from somewhere else and the name from somewhere else. And then we'll have all the information that we need to make a successful uh, add place request. We'll have the ID, we'll have the name of the user, we'll have the latitude and longitude of the favorite place, and we'll have the description. And so at that point, we'll actually be able to submit from that new activity and have the new favorite place show up on the map. So that's, that's, that's going to be kind of cool. That's where we're going. But the last little bit that you need to do here, and again, go to the, to the lesson write up and, and follow the instructions. You might need to Google around a little bit to figure out how to do this is make sure that this information is in the intent so that the add place activity can retrieve it and know the latitude and longitude that the user clicked at. So that's the last little piece of, uh, of, uh, of a challenge for you uh, to pass the next test case.